Hello everybody and welcome back. We are Arne and Carlos and we are your hosts today. As always. As always. Uh, we've been uh, working on some <laughs> embroidery tutorials. Uh, we showed you already uh, a while ago all the basic uh, freehand embroidery stitches. Uh, and uh, yeah, we've been really into embroidery lately. Among other things, we've designed a great collection of embroideries for Anchor Yarns that is out now. And uh, inspired by that collection, we wanted to show you a few of the embroideries we've done. And actually, we want to start from scratch. So what we have is a blank waste canvas, a blank piece, piece of, of fabric. Cotton. Cotton, yeah. And we're going to embroider uh, a cross-stitch embroidery from the beginning to the end while we have a conversation. I think that will be fun, don't you think, Arnett? Yeah, could, could be interesting takes to a see. a long time, maybe. Yeah. It depends. Exactly. And so the waste canvas technique, uh, which we've already shown previously, is when you embroider uh, onto a canvas using cross-stitch embroidery, and then you rip out the canvas and then you have the embroidery. Now we did a tutorial a way back, and for that particular tutorial we actually used an AIDA canvas, and a lot of you have pointed out that we were using the wrong canvas, and I guess in a way you are kind of right, it but. might have been the wrong canvas, but please consider this, we live on top of a mountain in the middle of nowhere in Norway, and sometimes we really just have to get or take whatever we have, because and we that's have what to, we do. yeah, because we, we take whatever we have. Yeah, and in this particular case with the Aida, we had to order it online. Oh, sorry, the waste canvas. We had to order it online. It didn't come on time. We were going to film. We didn't have it, so we just had to improvise and take the Aida canvas. But yeah, we are uh, we are aware of the fact that the waste canvas is much much better to but use. You can also use the Aida as long as you can pull the thread. You can use it. Yeah, this and is cheaper. Exactly. And then you also have the third option, which is the water-soluble canvas. And yes, you can also use that, but consider the fact that some uh, fabrics you cannot use water. So the silk that we were using at that time would have not worked with a water-soluble canvas because you couldn't actually put that silk in water. So you always need to take the thing that works the best for and your take embroidery. What you have, and as long as you can pull the thread, use it. Yeah. It makes no difference. Exactly. But yet. today we are doing it with the proper waist canvas. And what <laughs> we are going to embroider is a little heart, uh, which you will see at the end of this tutorial. Yeah. So let's start. Let's start. Okay, so let's start doing the embroidery. You'll need a few things. You'll need some canvas or something uh, that we've got here, fabric. Or a white blouse. Or a white blouse, uh, if you want to do the, it on a blouse, uh, which is what we'll show you in the end. You need a frame, um, like the one that we've got here. Uh, and then you need, obviously, the waist canvas that we've got here. Mm -hmm. uh, here's the waist canvas. Yeah, the waist canvas. Uh, you need your embroidery uh, yarns. You need uh, scissors and tapestry needles. Yeah. So you put the canvas no, the fabric and the canvas on the frame. So, uh, now we're ready to embroider, to start the embroidery. And we are using Anchor's uh, stranded cotton. It comes in uh, six strands uh, together. And we only need three strands of this for the cross-stitch embroidery that we're doing. So, uh, the first thing to do is to separate the strands from each other and just take three out of the six strands. And this is going to be a little heart with an arrow going across it. And we're using a, a series of different colors. We've got um, a red, a lighter red, a darker red. We've got a little bit of pink. Uh, we've got some blue for the feathers of the uh, arrow. And there's also some gold that is gonna be the arrow that crosses. So if you choose to, choose to have it pointing towards right side, it has to be that side. Yeah. On every stitch. Mm -hmm. If not, it looks messy. And then you can embroider like one line pointing one way, and then you go back the other way. That way it's much quicker than doing one and one and one. Yeah. Is there like a particular name for that technique or is it just... It's a cross stitch? It, yeah, yeah, but... Oh, I don't know. Because in, in Norwegian there is some sort of a, something about running? No, we, we have, that's just like f 
for fun. Oh, okay. Schalmöre top. Oh, yeah, the charming, uh, the charmer. <laughs> yeah. But that, okay, so that's like a fun, yeah. a fun name for something that doesn't really exist. I no, guess. not really. Yeah. Okay, so you're embroidering your stitches. So I finish one color first and then I change to the red one. So this is the darker color to make a shadow on the heart. Yeah, and this heart is something that we've uh, designed um, thinking a little bit about um, the collection of um, religious art that we have here. We've traveled a lot in South America and Southern Europe. Uh, some of our favorite destinations for traveling are there. And um, yeah, we like collecting religious art. We buy a lot of saints and virgins and altar things that you know belong to old altar or tables. And obviously there's a lot of hearts in these kind of things, hearts that have crowns on them and things like that. And when we were going to design this collection for Anchor, we, we decided that we wanted to do a few, a few things inspired by that collection. So the heart came out that way. And it's also a little bit of, you know, it could be like a little tattoo that somebody has on them. A sailor? Some, a little sailor, sailor tattoo, tattoo or something. And we did some for our knitted dolls a few years ago. Well, we had that book out, knitted dolls. We had a little sweater with a heart kind of tattooed on the sweater that you could then put on the doll, which looked really cute. So I think that the inspiration comes from there, don't you agree? I think so. Mm -hmm. And if you have a very tight jersey top and you're a little bit afraid of going to the tattoo place, yeah. you can always embroider make that. <laughs> the embroidery on, on the sleeve, yeah. On the sleeve. That could be really cool. Uh, then you look like a sailor. Yeah. And for Anchor, uh, we have had it embroidered on the back pocket of a jeans and also in the front, uh, which we will show you some pictures of when we're ready, when we finish up the embroidery. So um, yeah, we're working with a red thread upwards. And, and so I don't know, Arne, when was it that we got interested in all this religious art? It must have been in one of the trips that we did to Peru, uh, wasn't maybe it? Maybe it was the first time we went to Peru, when yeah. we had our production in Peru. Exactly, yeah. We and started that, to go to these old churches. Exactly, and that must have been back in 2007. Yeah. We went there for the first time to do knitwear production, and we ended up going to that, that area in Lima that had all the... Um, Antique stores. Antique stores. Yeah. Indeed. Some of them had like really, really amazing things and some of them didn't. And we walked into one that had all this religious art. It had all these wooden saints and hearts and crowns. Hearts and crowns, the silver crowns that we love as well. It had all the um, kind of fragments of different garments with these very interesting textiles embroidered in in silver threads and it was all very beautiful and very rich and I think we that's when we fell in love with all this religious uh, stuff art yeah. yeah well I call it art because it really is art yeah. and then we went to Arequipa to the monastery yeah that was a few years after that must have been in 2009 after. that was really beautiful mm. yeah we visited this convent this old the convent, convent um, that had been in use from the 16th century all the way until the 1970s and it had been completely isolated from the world and it had been opened up quite recently and it was like a city inside a city, the St. Catherine, I think it was, the yeah. St. Catherine convent. It was pretty amazing to see, um, yeah, what it was. So now you are embroidering kind of like the first, the, the first edge in the bottom. The side of the, like the shadow. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, exactly. This darker red does create kind of like the shadow under the heart. Under the heart. Or the arrow as well, right? Yeah. The arrow will also have a shadow. Mm -hmm. So this is all like tone in tone and different shades of reds to create a little bit of a, a contrast between the different reds so that it doesn't... A big fat heart. Yeah, a big fat heart with no... We hope. We hope, yeah. And we don't want it to be, you know, we didn't want, when we designed it, we didn't want it to just be in one red color because that would be very flat. Mm -hmm. So we so are. We added three colors. Added three like different shades of, of red, well, two shades of red and the pink, and the pink. so that we um, dark create a little bit of contrast between the colors to give it a little bit of shadow and make it more two dimensional, I'd say. Is this called wine red or yeah, yeah, burgundy? Yeah. Burgundy or wine red or something. You can use any shades of yeah. three reds. So 
depends yeah. on what you have. And I mean, the colors are specified. The exact colors are specified on the pattern. Yeah. And uh, the pattern is going to be posted on our website at arnandcarlos.com. It will also be posted on Anchor's website, I assume, mm -hmm. so that you are able to get it from there as well if you want to embroider this little piece. And I'm sure you're all very curious about um, what it's going to look like. And to keep the suspense up, we have decided that we will not show you until it's actually finished. So it's going to be a big surprise, I hope. And now I'm going a little bit up and down with the first stitch because I'm, I'm going down again. So you don't have to go on a straight line all the time. You can go a little bit up and down and around. It depends on where you're going the next time. Mm -hmm. so now I'm finishing the shadow on one side and I'm making, I'm going down again to make the shadow under the arrow. Now I've just made the shadow on one side of the heart and I'm going down again and doing the shadow which is under the arrow. Yeah, so you don't always need to move up. You can move up, you can, you can move go down. Anyway. Yeah. So it does make sense to start, you know, like when you do one color, you, you keep to that color. Um, yeah. And until it's have, done, yeah. If you have a lot of um, a lot of the same color on, on one line, you do everything in one, like one operation. Hmm. But if you have a, lot, a group of stitches in the same color, you can go up and down and all around. Yeah. What's ma most practical for the next stitch? Yeah, that's a, a great tip. That's a really great tip to have. So yeah, we're gonna be here for a while now, so uh, <laughs> yeah. And it's a, a bit of a challenge too to to do this embroidery and talk at the same time because uh, on the one hand you we're trying to be focused on on the embroidery and then on the other hand we're talking and we're guys so. We're not good at doing two things at the same time. Is, is it, it called multitasking? Yeah, multitasking, multitasking and men doesn't work. Doesn't work together. But we're doing our best and trying to to keep this moving. And you know, we might make a mistake at some point. And if we do, you'll just have to. Yeah, we might tell you you shouldn't do a mistake, and then we do it. Exactly. So. There's always room for mistakes. Yeah. It's variations. Exactly. It's not a mistake. So I'm making a shadow again above the arrow. So this is like the outline, outline of the arrow. The outline of the arrow. <laughs> yeah, and we picked this one. This little heart is the one that we chose for the for this project because it's not a very big heart. It's uh, supposedly it does it won't take uh, that long to to do. Uh, probably will it will probably take longer than we thought because time management is not one of our our strong things either. We kind of you know jump into things that we think are going to be super easy and then in the end they're not. But, but this is super easy in a way. Yeah, but time-wise we might actually think, oh, this is going to take 20 minutes and it ends up taking 45 or maybe two hours or something. You never know. Probably not two hours, but it does take its time. And remember, it's not a competition. It's not about doing it as fast as you can. Uh, it's about having a good time while you're doing it and relaxing and enjoying. And we want to show you how we, what do you call it, sew the, the loose ends on the back. No, that's not going to be part of so this project. So when you see this, it looks so like it's going in one operation, I hope. Some people might ask, how do you sew the loose the tails. But that will probably be something that we'll do in another tutorial at some other time. Uh, so today we're just focusing on the uh, cross stitch embroidery of the heart. 
showing you the, the technique. So yeah, the, um, yeah, the inspiration for this heart does come from, you know, collections that we've amassed throughout our travels and traveling is definitely something we do a lot of. Mm. Um, it's very tiresome, but it's also fantastic to be able to travel the world and, and see different cultures and admire the, beautiful, the beauty of this planet, really. And this year we've been to quite a few destinations. We went to Argentina in March. And Portugal. In May. In May. And, and France. Yeah, we've just been to France on holidays. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the trip to Australia was unforgettable. The first time ever that we've been down under. Down under. Yeah, and it was fantastic. We yeah, really, mate. really enjoyed Australia. It really inspires us. Um, and this summer we did... We found some really good, what do you call it, arts and crafts magazines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We from got, the twenties. Yeah, we found those flea mar in the flea market in France. Yeah, that's the one thing we always do is always wherever we travel, we look up where the local flea markets are, and then we go there and we go up and down looking for inspiration at flea markets. And if we hit the jackpot. That means that we find old magazines with crafts in them. In Mexico, in, back in 2016, we found the most amazing magazines. They were from the 40s, and they had a lot of embroidery uh, patterns, and they had a lot of other things uh, very relevant to embroidery, which were just remarkable. And um, Arna saw the stack, and we were with a really good friend who is a, she kind of used to work with, flea market things and antiques and knew how to bargain and then I was listening to her bargaining for some stuff and then when we saw the magazines I was like okay now I'm gonna try my bargaining skills and Arna was terrified because but you were good well yeah but in the beginning you were really scared that I was gonna blow it and I never bargain yeah and and, and then when if I, start... I can't afford it I don't buy it yeah but when I started bargaining I the look in your face in horror was like oh I'm gonna lose these magazines because Carlos is gonna get too cocky and he's going to say no and then the vendor is going to say no and then we're going to have to leave empty-handed and I saw that look on your face but yeah I really kicked some butt there and you did. got the thing I think half price of whatever it was he wanted and they were in really really bad condition well the magazines themselves were in great condition but they were so smelly it was such a bad smell and when we got back to Norway we had to keep them outside for a day or two and air them in our in our really cold because this was like in February so it was pretty cold outside here in Norway so we had to air them for a while so that the smell would go away and now they've been put in plastic mm -hmm. and they are well preserved somewhere uh, in our archives and yeah we went to a flea market and again jackpot a uh, lady had embroidery or sorry crafts magazines from the 20s yeah, and then this summer we had uh, another another adventure. Uh, we've just come back from France from a holiday uh, in uh, western France uh, near the uh, well by the Atlantic Ocean, and we went to another flea market. And again, jackpot uh, magazines from the twenties, beautiful magazines. But this time we did ask the lady how much they were, and they were only two euro each. So you know, I'm not going to bargain for two euro for a magazine. They had like I don't know eleven magazines or something, and we just got them mm -hmm. all. So 22 euro for some fabulous magazines. And the, I've good, and the good thing is that those magazines, they had some techniques we had never seen before. So, so we have to... Bang! Or you have to jackpot. read the French. Yes, I'll be and reading... And we have to learn those techniques. Yeah, I'll definitely be reading and translating whatever we find there that is Then we can do YouTube videos yep. with some all techniques from the 20s. And here we are talking, talking, blah, blah, blah. And I noticed that you've already changed color, huh, Arne? And you did that without even telling me. I know, I'm so good. Yeah, so now we're at the red. I think I give this to you soon. Yeah, so we've done the, Arne has done the uh, red embroidery. Uh, will you be using more of the darker red? Uh, no. no, I it's finished done. one color at a time. And now the new color has started. This is the red that is gonna kind of be the heart. The parts that are supposedly not in the shadow these are the parts that are exposed to complete light in the two-dimensional embroidery that we're doing and yeah I mean takes take some time 
when you start it out, it does take a little time, but once once you've got it going, it is actually pretty quick. I'm impressed. I'm really impressed with your speed now. If you, if you put it on a, like on a pocket or on a garment or a collar or something, it might take longer. Yeah. Especially for pockets because you have to have your hand inside the pocket when yeah. you make the embroidery. Yeah, so that will obviously, doing it on a garment will take longer than doing it on a piece of yeah. fabric. But yeah, here you have it. And uh, yeah, and obviously also the fact that Arne is doing it and not me, because I, I can do this as well, but I'm just too slow compared to him. I kind of spend more time on each and every one of my stitches. I am too uh, perfectionist. That's a big problem being a Virgo as I am. I mean, I have, some other friends who are also born in in the summer who are Virgos and yeah, it's a nightmare. All, all our little things that we do and are you know they annoy Arne a lot. You I don't know, have like, that problem. You don't have that problem because you are you know you are you're Cancer, and you're also very talented in anything you do. But me, I mean, well, not writing writing an envelope by hand is a nightmare because I just you know write one. And it's not good enough, so I throw it away. And yeah, so Arne, Arne does keep tell, keep, has to tell me a lot about uh, these things. Don't be too perfect. I really and don't care that much. No, and that's the way it should be. You should all be carefree and not care too much about those things. So yeah. Anyway, he's quicker than me. So there's something very relaxing about doing these embroideries as well. I mean, you you really do clear your mind. Except that we're talking too much, so we're definitely not. Clearing our minds. Oh, sometimes I, I've actually done a little bit too many stitches in one color, but you won't see it because we have we work with good people. Yeah, yeah. As always, we've got our lovely team here. Is that editing? Yeah. Who will edit it out if it needs editing? And this waste canvas technique is also something that we have always loved. Um, you know, people who are from Norway will, will know immediately that um, we have a lot of traditions for, for crafts here because of our folk costumes. People in Norway, they still use their folk costumes on the very important occasions like baptisms and, yeah, weddings. And, you know, when you need to be well dressed in Norway, it's never wrong to put your folk costume you on. You can't go wrong. You can't go wrong, yeah. You know, and this or maybe is a, you can go wrong if you go to a party and you're the only one with a yeah, folk costume. Well, you might feel a little bit stupid, but or overdressed. Yeah, but then again, I mean, if you get an audience with His Majesty the King of Norway, it is the thing to wear because then you are then wearing you're safe. your very best to, 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 um, to uh, visit him. And yeah, that's what they always say. If you're in doubt, uh, wear your folk costume. Good thing about folk costumes is that it does keep a lot of the hand uh, industry, what you say, embroidery, sewing, alive. Because these folk costumes all have different um, techniques and different traits to them that uh, are from a specific era when they were created. So there's certain costumes that have a lot of embroidery work that has to be done by hand. and. Um, I think one of the first times we came in contact with the waste canvas embroidery technique was when Arne's aunt showed us a few of the uh, folk costumes from the south of Norway where Arne's mother's family comes from. And she showed us how they are done, the, these very intricate floral designs. And it was with the waste canvas techniques. And this is something that has been around for at least 100 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, Norway and folk costumes is something that um, yeah, we're lucky to live in this country. I mean, we have all this, all these great crafts and techniques that are alive. The knitting scene is very much here and has been for so many decades. And on top of it all, such a beautiful country with all this wonderful, all these beautiful landscapes and the great midnight sun and the aurora borealis. I mean, couldn't be better. <laughs> I think we're lucky that we live here. Do you agree? Lucky. Yeah, yeah. We're lucky. So how's it going? You're a little quiet now. I I'm guess quiet. you're focusing, I'm on focusing the on the little heart. Looking real good. Yeah, I'm doing the the red. Yeah. 
It's a lot of fun creating these embroideries, wasn't it? I mean, using the different colors and putting them together. Yeah. Yeah. We've done a lot of embroideries. Not all of it's in the catalog because we, could, we couldn't stop doing embroideries. Yeah. And now we're considering, uh, should we do a book on embroidery? Is that something that we've been thinking? I don't know what you guys think. Uh, if you have any, if you have any uh, suggestions, you know, you could always leave them on the comment field. Should we do a book on embroidery? Let's do a book on embroidery. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it could be fun. I'd yeah, so I don't know. I mean, we've been thinking. We have so many embroideries that, we, that we've done, that we love, that didn't make it into the collection. And, you know, what are we going to do with those? And yeah, one of the ideas is, should we do a book? We don't know. I mean, what do you guys think? Why don't you leave a comment if you think we should do a book on embroidery? I think it could be a pretty cool book, don't you think, Arne? I think it could be a cool We could book. do a lot of collages and show off a few of the old magazines that we've, that we've uh, bought as well. And, uh, you and know, mix them up with the new stuff that we come up with. We can use My Beautiful Parrot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The because one that... some people might have seen on Facebook and Instagram. We, yeah. we put a picture of a parrot. Exactly. Or actually, it's two parrots. Two parrots, yeah. They're on, a, they're on, a, um, they're on Instagram and on Facebook. Uh, they're being embroidered on a men's uh, jacket. Actually, an incredible jacket. You got it off a thrift store for like ten dollars, well, and it's nothing. a Zengna. It's an Emelianino Zengna jacket. I mean, a very expensive it's pure one. Pure wool. Yeah, and it's a super, super expensive jacket. And I don't know how, how you could be so lucky to find such a jacket in a thrift store for that amount of money. It I have the ridiculous. eye for it. You have a good eye. Yeah, I have a good eye. And there's going to be two parrots on the back. Uh, some people have actually commented on those uh, since we've posted them on Instagram and Facebook. But there will be more because I was trying to be smart and I used the scissor to cut away some of the waste canvas. And you made a hole. And I was too quick. Yeah. I made a hole in the jackets, so I had to put I have to put a flower uh, maybe flower between the two parrots or something. So yeah, this is an ongoing project. It's going to be it's going to be this beautiful jacket with two parrots. They're mirrored. They're mirrored and and then you're going to have some flowers in the middle. Some flowers. And maybe something under the parrots as well. Maybe. Uh, but as always with us, it's a work in progress. It's kind of like on a break right now. We have it hanging upstairs. Yeah, actually I bought the blue color and since our house is so messy I can't find the blue yarn that's why it has stopped because yeah I'm still looking for the blue yarn yeah it's what we call creative chaos yeah. that's when you have a studio that is so creative that everything's everywhere and you can't find anything and in our life and in our studio we have creative chaos every single day in January, we tidied up our entire studio, and there's actually photographs of that on Instagram and Facebook. You can actually see Arne sitting on an armchair. In a clean studio. In a clean studio with the new shelves that we bought that at that time. And we did that on purpose to clean the whole thing. And if you would have seen what the studio looks like today, it looks like it has there has been a terrible, I don't know, creative craziness going on and it kind of exploded in there you're so, never in there no i well you I, avoid that room well yeah I, I i think better when i'm in a in a different environment that is a little bit more tidy um that's me so i tend to work in the other part of the studio in another room where where things usually are a little bit more in place while arne loves his creative mess where he's got all his yarns and all his books and all his things everywhere Please. and you should see I mean I think better when it's a mess you do yeah and then of course everybody wants to be a fly on the wall here everybody wants to know what it sounds like when uh, we're gonna do something and we can't find something and I can kind of recreate it for you guys it's very easy Arne will say oh I think I need to find that yarn and I say well good luck with that and then he'll say, well, yeah, no problem. I'm going to go up and get the yarn. And then he's going to be away and I'm just going to be hearing, you know, things moving and chairs and this and that and bam, 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 whatever. You know why? 
And then on is going to come down. No, no, hang on, I hang can't on. find it. It's because you have been moving things around. Well, and then you come down, and then you say, I can't find it. And, I, and I'll say something like, well, that's because I took it. It was down in the kitchen, and I took it out of there because we had to do, I had to do something with baking or something, and I couldn't have that yarn there. So I've taken it you up see, to the studio. Move and then around. he said, yeah, and then he'll say, oh, but I looked all over the studio. I can't find it. And then I'll say, well, but look again. And then he'll go up and he'll go, yeah, all this again. And then he'll come down. Maybe he's found it. Maybe he'll have to go up for a third round. And yeah, in the meantime, we can't get anything done and it's all chaotic. And then suddenly we'll, get, we'll go, oh, forget about it. I've just come up with another idea. We don't need the yarn anyway. And then we're going to do something completely different. So in a way, it's actually quite good that we have this chaos because it does help us, you know, improvise when we can't find the stuff we're looking for. So now I, now I can definitely see a heart taking shape here. A heart coming. And it is looking fabulous, isn't it? Fabulous. Well. Uh, yeah. and those At least it's a heart. It is, yeah. How fabulous can a heart be? Well, they are very beautiful. I mean, they are beautiful symbols. They are used a lot as embellishment, you know, on different kinds of things. And we really love, you know, as we were saying in the beginning, going to these old stores with all this beautiful religious art. And there's always these beautiful little hearts in silver or or in fabric and they've got crowns on them and they're just so beautiful and we've got a friend who does love collecting them so she has a lot of those hearts in her in her um, interior decoration and whenever we we go around we look for those as well and think about her that we should get her a heart for her collection and sometimes they actually end up in our collection because we love them so much we get one for her and then we get one for ourselves as well And you're still. This is. Work in progress. A work in progress. Pro progress. Progress. Yeah. Progress. I'm almost there. So, just have to fill with red. Yeah. So, do you have any, any, spe any pink. special, any particular tips that you want to share about? No. When you do the cross stitch embroidery, no. No, just not do really. it. Just do it. Just do it. It's easy. <laughs> it's easy. Yeah. Get the right canvas. That's one thing that we've heard. Yeah, we heard, but there's no wrong or right. As soon as long as you can pull the, the, the thread out, it makes no difference. Yeah. But then again, you can make your life easier by getting the softer waste canvas, mm. which is actually made to be wasted, if you know what I mean. So. But I don't think it makes any difference because if you put your embroidery on on the fabric on on the garment or if you put it on the wall and you frame it, you still need the the canvas. Yeah. So if you take it away or you keep it, I, I can't see the problem. Yeah. No, we usually say it's the end result that counts. Um, and you do it the way you feel the most comfortable doing it. That is always a good piece of advice to give everyone that, um, you know, things can be done in so many different ways. And it's sometimes it has to do with personal taste, sometimes individuality, or sometimes like in our, in our case, when we did the reindeer embroidery, we actually didn't have any waste canvas here because it didn't arrive on time. Uh, yeah, for us, living on top of a mountain and buying things online can create huge problems i mean they get quickly you know if they fedex them from say france or italy or something we'll get it, it you know it will go you know within a day or two it will arrive in oslo but then it gets handed over to the post and then it can take up to five days before it gets here which is crazy because we're only two hours away by car from oslo and sometimes i just feel like saying to to the post okay let me just get in my car and drive to oslo and pick it up myself. But then I can't do that because I don't have a driver's <laughs> license. So, so I can't really say that because I can't drive. Then I have to say something like Arne will drive and pick it up. And then it doesn't have that power, you know, when I'm trying to threaten them to bring us our stuff quicker.
So yeah, living on top of a mountain is beautiful and we've got all this spectacular scenery and all the space and all the fresh air and everything, but we are isolated and things don't always work the way we do. But we're still grateful that we still can order online and get it delivered, even if it takes a while. At least it means we're not forgotten here in our little corner of the world. And how are you feeling doing this embroidery? Are you feeling very zen, very relaxed, or are you kind of... I'm always zen and relaxed. Yeah. So yeah, yeah this, really, this embroidery really does relax you and make you all nice and toasty in your brain. You can <laughs> empty your brain, whatever your troubles are, they, they go away when you embroider. It's really, really something wonderful. And yeah, I mean, we're really busy. We travel so much. We're always on the move. And sometimes we do wish we could spend more time here at home than what we do. And I think that if I was going to do like a very advanced project, one of those really time consuming ones, I'd love to do a whole needlepoint uh, chair. You know what I mean? One of those mm. antique chairs and do the whole seat and the whole back in... in um, Maybe even using the cross stitch. Uh, we have technique. some old chairs lying around. Yeah, but we do we have the time? Well, no, because we're always busy doing other things. You don't have to bring the chair on the plane. You bring the fabric. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what I mean. I would still love to do a whole thing. Yeah, but can you see me beginning something like that and actually finishing it off within not a really. reasonable amount of time? <laughs> no. Do you see yourself doing mm, that? No, not, no, no, not really, no. <laughs> and it's because we're traveling so much. We're it's not a new, uh, new UFO. A new UFO, yeah. And, um, and then, of course, I'd love... I, the, one thing, the one thing that I would love in our interior decoration, in our home, that we don't have, and which is the biggest dream in my life, is to have one of those extraordinary needlepoint rugs you know the french ones that are so expensive that they are impossible i mean they are completely out of the question I, it would probably take me five lifetimes to save up and afford one of those so that that's out of the question but imagining owing owning a needlepoint rug with all those beautiful swirls in those beautiful colors that's what, what i'm going to do when i get old well, yeah, well, yeah, why not? Maybe that could be like a retirement plan that we have, that we embroider one. You know, we, you could sit on one side and I could sit on the other, and mm -hmm. then we could just embroider it until we... Then we have to remember that the last thread is pointing the same direction all the time. Oh, really? That could be hard. Oh, yeah, yeah, that would be... Yeah, if we're two of us doing it. <laughs> but imagine having a rug like that uh -huh. on your floor. Wouldn't that be spectacular? It's a dream, but maybe one day we'll one do day, it. It might not happen. Probably not. Probably. We're going to be working until we. I think you can do the chair. Start with the chair. What, okay. So what did you do with that yarn? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're changing the thread now, and um, apparently I've been talking and twirling some of the pink thread in my hand at the same time, and now we've got this mess here of a thread that is all knots. Whoops. And I'm really sorry about that, Arne, that I've just messed it up a little bit for you. But um, sometimes I can do th two things at the same time. I can talk and I can mess things up. So... Um, <laughs> that's easy. That's really easy. But now... I did it the whole time. Well, it's, it's my fault. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to mess up your, your thread. Uh, I'm just going to put this slowly away from me. Red somehow? Yeah, yeah. That's the good thing about Anchor. You get a whole specter of different shades. You've got so many different red colors to choose from. You've got so many different pinks, uh, so di many different shades of blue. And it's also a good idea, you know, look at those shades yourself and create the, the, the tones that you want. Put Maybe them together yourself. Maybe you want yourself. a blue heart. A blue heart, yeah. That's like... What's that called? The hearts people put on their messages. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, the like emojis. Yeah, yeah. You emoji, get them blue. You green, get them green. Heart. We don't know what the, those hearts mean. No, we're a little bit. Sometimes we get a blue heart or a green heart, and yeah, thinking, I mean, what what does that mean? We might have to Google that to find out if it is something good or something bad. Maybe it's something really bad. I don't know. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
That's the problem with all these emojis. When you are the re the generation that didn't grow up with them, mm -hmm. um, what does the uh, UFO means? UFO or like the, the the face of the alien? Oh, you mean the alien? Face? I don't know what I that means. Know. But UFO, in my opinion, is an unfinished object. That's an object that you've been working on for a long time. You've been knitting it, but or you've not been crocheting on the, on, it on a text message or on Instagram. Yeah, but why couldn't you put like? Oh, I have a UFO that I'm going to well, start on, I and then to, you could put maybe the... Maybe that's what, it, what they mean. I don't know. It's a UFO. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Anyway, if you, if you know what these hearts mean, these uh, blue hearts and green hearts, uh, please tell us. Uh, we really need to know. And we haven't had time to Google that either. Um, you know, sometimes I think, oh, I'm going to Google that, and then I forget. So. If you have an idea, whatever idea, what do you think those hearts mean? The blue ones, the green ones? Tell us. On the put it on, your com on the comments here below and, and let's see if we can figure it out. But anyway, our heart is red and it's got all its accents and it's got the, the shadow where the light is on and it's got the parts which, is, which are darker where the sunlight is not shining. That's the last pink stitch. Oh, wow. And then I will do the arrow in gold yeah and when the arrow comes up that is when the heart really is going to start to pop i think in my opinion the golden arrow is the what do you call it the icing arrow. so we're finishing up the embroidery the the golden thread is now uh, coming up and remember we used three strands of all the different colors in the anchor stranded cotton but the metallic thread we're using it as it is because it actually comes that way it's uh, you can't really split it open but it doesn't really matter uh, and this anchor metallic does give it a really cool accent now um, this has been this has been fun I mean we're finishing it up and um, I have to say Arne um, since we started our career uh, we've been in the media quite a lot in Norway and abroad we've done television we've done interviews we've done magazines we've done newspaper and we've done radio and I have to say radio is my absolute favorite. I love uh, radio because um, I love the fact that you're talking and you're actually creating images for people to, mm. to put in their own heads. You know what I mean? I like radio. I love radio. And I think that my, the funnest, the most fun ever that we had in the media or you know when we did press was that time back in 2010 when our Christmas book was super popular. And the local radio station here in, in um, where we live invited us to co-host uh, the morning show. Remember that? Mm. We were at the studio for three hours. And we even could, we could pick some of the music. Yeah, we that was cool. Chose some music, and I'm sure you, you're curious to know what we chose. Uh, I'm sure there was some Dolly Parton in there. There was a Dolly Parton. And, and there was another one, Brett Denner. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. And then we had all these microphones, well, we've got, we had uh, a microphone each, and we had tons of buttons that we weren't supposed to touch. Was it Brett then? Is that the mic? I don't remember. I don't remember. But I do remember all the buttons that I really wanted to touch, but they told me don't touch, so I didn't. And then the, the best thing was when the weather lady came in and gave me the uh, forecast, and I got, I got to read that on the radio. That was cool. And I thought that was so much fun. And then there was this city that I really couldn't pronounce because it was so such a... Yeah, difficult name. And we're not going to pronounce it here either. because It doesn't sound good in English. No, that's the thing, yeah. <laughs> so it was a little bit funny. Yeah. So now that, actually, now that we said that it doesn't sound good in English, maybe we have to pronounce it so that, because people are going to be really curious, what is the name of that city? Arne? Because it, it, it's a city in your area, and you're better at pronouncing it than me. Fox to go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> And usually they include that city when they're, you know, telling the weather in, in our area. So, yeah. But that was a great, fun experience, being on the radio, talking and creating those images for people to have. So, I don't know. I mean, what do you guys think? Should we do more, more of these kind of videos? <laughs> Let us know in the comment fields. Will it be like? A mix of a YouTube video and a podcast. Well, it is. It's kind of like a YouTube video with a podcast. We're doing the we're doing the embroidery from beginning to the end. People are seeing 
this image coming to life and we're telling stories at the same time you know we've got tons of stories we can tell you I mean and I we've been I've around done... for many many years now so I, I think I've done only one mistake oh only one wow that's pretty good I don't think you can see I remember that. people uh, we embrace our mistakes uh, it's through failure that we uh, learn learn and become successful there's no shame in failing you can always just try again and you just try again and try again you keep persevering and then one day bam you got it <laughs> <laughs> so yeah what a pretty little heart and the arrow goes straight through the heart actually you could add a pair of what you call it blood drops exciting exciting <laughs> there we go and look at this we've done an embroidery from beginning to the end well actually I'm not going to take credit you have done an embroidery from the beginning to the end uh, it's really hard to be work like be two people working on one yeah it would have been really hard and imagine me doing the embroidery and you talking to me because if you're bad at doing two things at the same time multitasking you're worse i'm like the ultimate guy you know i cannot do anything finish if i do something else at the and same then time i can show you i said i wouldn't show you but i can do it anyway so this is I'm a bonus so feature I'm today i'm so kind look yeah. i'm just pulling it so the bonus feature in today like is uh, Arne showing the back of the embroidery. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the back of our embroideries are not so nice, but normally we don't show it to people. Yeah. And please keep in mind uh, that we've, d we've done this live. We've done this from beginning to end while talking, and it probably could have looked nicer. And I'm sure lots of you can do a much better job on the back than we've done today. But, you know, considering we've done this live and... and I will cut way. away some of it oh, no, because no, 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 no. I it's can my use turn. this oh, okay, for another project. I want to I wanna rip it up, please. Yeah, but I, you can't rip out all this. No, I know that. You know like when you have that bubble wrap that you get? And you know when we order stuff and it's all wrapped in bubble wrap? Um, I love getting the bubble wrap out and then I love pressing the little bu bubbles to make the sound. You got that from your mother. I got that from my mother. My mother, if, if my mother is here and we, we get the bubble wrap, we'll fight over it and she'll always win because she's my mom and I love her. Uh, but yeah, um, it's kind of like the same with this waste canvas thing. It's kind of, to me, it's like the bubble wrap except it's waste canvas. And I just have this thing about tearing it up and, and, and getting the threads off. It's your so turn. It's my turn now. Oh yeah. Mm. So Arne is going to let me take his his seat and I am going to finish this up which is really unfair because you've done the whole thing yeah but I want to cut a little bit more which is a little unfair aren't it because you've already well, you can take the credit I'm you not can... taking the credit <laughs> I don't care Okay, I'm... And when you, when you do the embroidery, you have to remember that you're not pulling the needle through the canvas because then it's stuck. Then it can be really hard to get the, the canvas out from the embroidery. It's just that it takes a little time to get the... You know, when you start doing the pulling of the threads, uh, there is a point where it gets a little bit hard because it's mm -hmm. in the beginning. And now I'm getting into that uh, that point where it's easier. But yeah, there's a few places where it's a little bit tight. Mm. But normally it's easier. It's easiest when you pull the canvas out from the small parts. Yeah, that's what I'm doing now. And leave now. the longest part until the end. That's what I'm, exactly what I'm doing now. I'm trying to get these out. Okay, guys, so here is the final result. Uh, we are pretty stoked about this. Isn't it looking good, Arne? It's looking amazing. Yeah, and we've done it on a piece of fabric, <laughs> but for the anchor collection, we did it um, on a garment. And anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed uh, this. Remember, we are doing tutorials every week. Uh, so if you like what you see, please 
subscribe to our channel. Uh, and remember the pattern is always up on the website henricarlos.com. You can go there, get it. The Anchor website will also have loads of inspiration for you, uh, so you can also go there. Have so fun. yeah, thank you for watching you. and see you again next time. Bye. Bye.